What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack -a series. Hopefully you guys had a fantastic weekend or excited to get into this pack of planar chaos. This is a really, really interesting pack. Uh, lots of crazy things. We saw a lot of like color switching going on. Uh, and so things like instead of ball lightning, which is like this huge, you know, three red for the six one haste sacrifice it at the end of the turn deals tons of damage instead we get that kind of card in green uh for three green and it basically does the same thing there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on where we're switching up the color uh kind of roles in the game of magic and it's actually a really fun way to play and a really interesting set uh we do see slivers and things like that in this set as well as some very very interesting mechanics along the way uh, we are going to go through this as if we're picking our first round draft pick. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to figure out what a good uh, first round pick would be. Uh, I'll go ahead and say I did not draft during this time. Uh, so I'm going to do the best I can, but we're going to take this as a bit of a learning experience for everybody here. Uh, for those who uh, may not have drafted during this time or hadn't had the opportunity to draft during this time. Uh, for anybody that does know this set really, really well, please, by all means, share your knowledge in the comment section below. That's very, very welcome. We're happy to have that. And please Please don't hesitate to tell me I'm wrong uh, going through this, but we are going to go through this. Every single card, Utopia Vow is our first one. It is an enchant creature for one and a green. Uh, the enchanted cr creature cannot attack or block, uh, but it does have tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So uh, interesting card here. Um, I think it's a really interesting way of playing an enchant creature because it can either be a pacifism effect or or a mana ramp effect, depending on, or technically both, but you see what I'm saying, you kind of play it to either side. Uh, and based on that, you'll want to either target one of your opponent's creatures or one of yours. And so I actually like that because while it does kind of give two abilities on one card, it also adds that flexibility in, and that's always really, really welcome. Uh, again, this is kind of showing off that color pairing kind of switch where uh, we're getting to see that can attack or block uh, on an enchant creature in green versus the passive of the pacifism effect we're used to seeing in white uh which i think is really interesting the mana ramp obviously very very green focused uh fixing very very important as well i think you can use this in a multitude of ways but i actually really like it uh pseudo removal or mana ramp perfect perfect card for the early game and to deal with some of those late game threats so i actually like this as a good starting point i don't know that this is going to be where we end up of course but i do think because it kind of counts as removal or uh, at least pseudo removal i i do really like it uh spitting sliver uh, is a 3-3 three, three for four and a black and all slivers have first strike so uh for those of you who may not know what the slivers are uh, I'm going to go over it fairly quickly, but essentially it's all slivers buff all other slivers, uh, or in this case, just all slivers. And what I mean by that is it buffs itself too. Uh, this does give itself first strike as well as any other slivers on the battlefield. Now that can be yours and your opponents. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if you find yourself up against another sliver deck, you are going to be helping them out a little bit as well. Uh, but generally that's a bit of a tough uh, or a tall order, I think, in limited to pull off the sliver deck. That's not to say it's impossible and certainly uh, it it is very possible but I don't think this is a flagship card for that deck while it is very very powerful don't get me wrong uh, I don't think that this is like the crazy bomb that you're gonna want uh, to start off with to really push you into that deck so uh, if you can go for it in draft I think it's worth trying uh, at least once or twice just to get your get your mind around how the slivers work but it is a really really tough thing to pull off so I don't love it here but uh, if you can make it work or if we see a flagship card later in the pack maybe we'll move in uh, Avon Rift Watcher uh, is a 2-3 flyer for 2 and a white. Uh, it does have Vanishing 3, so this permanent comes into play with 3 time counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you remove a time counter from it, and then when the last one's removed, you do have to sacrifice it. Uh, but when it comes into play or leaves play, you gain 2 life. So, actually a really, really solid card in my opinion. Uh, it's a 2-3 with flying for 3, so already we're pretty good on the stats end. Uh, in particular, because it has flying, it's going to be able to deal some damage in the air and hopefully be that evasive threat in the like early to mid game uh, that is hopefully just going to dwindle the opponent's life total by just enough to finish off the game later on. Uh, and then on top of that, you get a little bit of a life buff out of it. Now, that's not a huge reason to pick this card, but I do think it's worth noting it's not bad. Uh, totally, you're going to hopefully be able to gain, I should say, four life off of this, uh, which is not, you know, inconsequential. I think that's enough to, to warrant it. 
uh, that on top of the stats. The Vanishing 3 obviously kind of sucks, but uh, it just means your opponent probably won't want to target it with removal uh, because it feels really bad to remove something that has Vanishing. Uh, not only that, but there are a lot of synergies in this set with bounce spells. Uh, and if you can bounce this back to your hand, you can continuously proc it uh, and reset that vanishing count, which is really, really nice. So I actually really like this. I think I like it more than Utopia Val, to be honest. Uh, while Utopia Val, again, kind of pseudo removal, I don't necessarily think that's exactly what it's for. I do think it's good uh, and you can use it for that. But uh, a lot of times activated abilities are going to be a really good thing for for like big bombs to have. Uh, and so, yes, it's great that they can't attack you, but they might still be able to activate their ability. And I don't know that I'd want to give my opponent that mana ramp either or fixing. So I'm going to go with the Rift Watcher for now. Uh, Sting Scorger is a 2-2 for one and a red. It does have Echo for three and a red. So uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if this came under your control at the beginning of the last upkeep, uh, sacrifice it unless you pay its Echo cost. So uh, essentially that just means this has an additional cost on the following turn. Uh, when it comes into play, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Uh, again, a very interesting card because it's a bounce effect on a red card, which is not something we're used to seeing. Uh, but on top of that, it is just a solid two drop. It's a two, two for two, perfectly fine. If you've got nothing else to do, you've got, if you're hopefully you'll have four mana to pay for that echo uh, and keep it around. But honestly, it's kind of served its purpose at that point. It's a two mana bounce spell at the very worst. Uh, and so I actually really like this card. I think I like it more than the Rift Watcher. No, actually, I'm, I'm, I think I'm mistaken. I like the flying better on the Rift Watcher. So I think I'm going to go with that. Uh, but I do really like Sting Scorger. I think that's a really solid pickup uh, if you are interested in that kind of color pair. Uh, Saltfield Recluse is a 1-2 for 2 and a white. Tap it and target creature gets minus 2, minus 0 until the end of the turn. So this seems like a very kind of innocuous card. However, uh, I actually think it's a fairly decent card to pick up if you can. Uh, not super early by any means, but it's a good thing to pick up maybe mid to late pack. Uh, it has some rebel synergies and things like that, which is great. But uh, it's also something that your opponent's always going to have to play around if this is on the field. Uh, they have to keep in keep into account that, you know, a minus two uh, on attack is actually something very, very relevant and it can add up. And so uh, that may force some specific attacks or specific blocks in ways that you may not expect. Uh, and so I actually really like this card. It just makes the opponent think a little bit more. Not more than the Rift Watcher for sure, but I do think it's a solid card. Uh, Fury Charm is an instant for one and a red and you choose one. So destroy target artifact. Or target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains trample until the end of the turn. Uh, or remove two time counters from target permanent or suspended card. Uh, we haven't seen suspend yet, but it's essentially very similar uh, using those time counters to vanishing, except it's kind of in a reverse way. Uh, you suspend the card uh, for a specific mana cost comes in with those many counters on it, uh, and it's exiled, basically. Uh, and so each turn, you remove a time counter from it, and then once there are no counters, you actually get to cast the card without paying its mana cost. So uh, it's actually a really interesting mechanic, one that I like a lot. But uh, this card in particular is very good because it's flexible. Uh, you, at worst, have basically a decent combat trick. It's not amazing, but it's something. Uh, if you've got some synergy with time counters, it's great. And then it always has that destroy target artifact, which is just good utility. It's not necessarily something you'll always need, but it's good to have it. So I, I like this card, uh, but it's definitely not a first pick. It's not a reason to be in that color by any means. We haven't really seen a strong uh, reason to be in any color yet, but I don't think this is uh, stronger than the Rift Watcher by any means. I want a little bit more creature focus and limited usually. Uh, and so in the position where you're kind of between two cards, Go for the creature normally, uh, unless the spell is just way, way more powerful, in which case that's that you, you got to take it. But uh, this is not one of those cases. I don't think Fury Charm is that great. Uh, I do think it's fine, but not amazing. Uh, Vitaspore Thalid is a 1-1 one, one for one and a green. Uh, excuse me. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a spore counter on the Thalid. Uh, you can remove three spore counters from it and put a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token on uh, into play and then sacrifice the sapperling and target creature gains haste until the end of the turn. So uh, this is a really interesting card uh, to demonstrate the kind of black green fungus deck. 
Uh, it's a really interesting deck, a lot of fun. Uh, there was a constructed, like a pre-constructed uh, intro deck uh, based entirely off of this, which was very, very interesting. Uh, and I like that deck. However, the problem that I find is that it dies to aggro decks very, very easily. Uh, because as we're seeing here, it's great to be able to have that long-term inevitability to throw out 1-1 one, one tokens and then just be able to block for days, attack for days, do ever what, you know, whatever you need to do. But it takes a while, uh, unless you have some very specific enablers. And there are some in here, but you have to pick those up first. Uh, otherwise, this deck just loses because it's very, very slow. Uh, it's not a bad deck, don't get me wrong, and you can certainly make it work uh, without some of those really strong cards, but you gotta have something to really make it tick. This is a good card to have for it, but it's certainly not one of those cards. Uh, Deadly Grub is a 3-1 for two and a black. It also has Vanishing Three, so very similar to the Rift Watcher here. Uh, and when it's put into a graveyard from play, if it had no time counters on it, put a 6-1 green insect creature token into play with this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. So this is a really interesting card. I kind of don't like it though. Uh, the reason being, uh, it's, it's great if you can make it work, don't get me wrong, but you kind of have to do absolutely nothing with it for three turns to make it work. Um, and that kind of sucks. It's not great. Uh, unless you have something like Fury Charm where you can do it early. Uh, I don't think that this is an amazing card. It dies so, so easily uh, because of that one toughness. Any burn spell will take it out. Uh, removal, of course, of any kind will. And that's tr that's that's very, very difficult. Uh, three turns is a long time to leave a 3-1 just sitting on the battlefield doing nothing. It's not really worth risking putting it into combat because, of course, they're going to block it. Anything kills it. And so... I don't think that this is a worthwhile pick. I'd rather have something that encourages that aggression a little bit more, which is definitely the Rift Watcher over this. Uh, Brute Force is an instant for one red. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. This is an exact uh, functional reprint forced into red of uh, Giant Growth, which is kind of the old school one mana uh, do something for three uh, kind of thing. So it's a really interesting card and a very good combat trick, uh, but unfortunately that's it. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. Combat tricks are good. If you're in that color, take them, but they are not first picks. Uh, they never are first picks unless there's some crazy format where I don't know about that. Uh, and so I don't think that this is a worthwhile pickup super, super early. If you find yourself in red with a lot of creatures though, 100% this is a good card. Uh, Piracy Charm is one blue for an instant, similar to the Fury Charm. Uh, choose one. Target creature gains Island Walk until the end of the turn, or target creature gets plus two minus one until the end of the turn, or play target player discards a card. Uh, this is an interesting one. I kind of think this is less useful than the Fury Charm. Uh, I don't know that for sure because you still get that combat trick. Uh, dis discarding a card can be good depending on the situation, but it's very dependent on the situation. Uh, you have to have know that there's like only one or two really good cards in their hand to make it super worth it. Of course, it's just value, so like that's fine, but I don't love it to be honest. Uh, and again, the Rift Watcher is a very solid creature. It's going to be dealing damage in the air. There's no reason to take a Piracy Charm over it. <clears throat> uh, Seal of Primordium is one in a green for an enchantment. Sacrifice it and it, it destroys target artifact or enchantment. Uh, this is just a very solid sideboard card for green. Again, something to pick up mid to late pack. It's not something you pick up early. Uh, it's not a bad card by any means. We see it played in a lot of places, in fact. Uh, limited, though. It's really dependent on the matchup. You don't know if you're going to have an artifact or enchantment to target, and so it's just not worth it. Uh, so, in that case, pick it late up, uh, late in, later in the pack when you know you're in green, uh, and then it's you know just a really good sideboard tech card. All right, our first uncommon is Cartery Sliver. Uh, it is a 2-2 for red and white. Uh, all slivers have pay one, sacrifice this creature. It deals one damage to target creature or player. Or all slivers have pay one, sacrifice this creature, prevent the next one damage that we would dealt to target sliver or player this turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Really interesting card. Kind of does make me want to go for the sliver deck a little bit. Uh, this is a really, really cool one that you can uh, use, especially dealing like ping damage to a lot of stuff. You can kind of stack that damage however you need to, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and so I actually really like this. It's got a lot of flexibility. <sighs> 
I feel like the Rift Watcher is much more of a safe pick, I will go ahead and say. Uh, but it's really, really fun to try for that Slivers deck. Uh, I think if I was like in that situation, if I was really drafting this set, I think I would actually give this a shot. But I'm going to keep them together for now. Uh, and we'll see what the rest of the pack holds. So, uh, Sarah's Boon. As an enchant creature for two and a white, uh, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus two, as long as it's white, and then otherwise it gets minus two, minus one. Uh, really interesting, kind of okay in a white deck, because obviously you're going to have uh, creatures either to buff, uh, or depending on what your opponent's playing, you may be able to kill a creature with this. I do kind of like that, uh, but I don't think it's good enough to pick over the, the Rift Watcher or the Sliver. Uh, in this case, I do like the flexibility here. Don't get me wrong, but this really wants you to be in white and we're first picking. So we don't want to be overcommitted too early. Uh, so I'm going to pass on it here, but I don't actually think this is a bad card solely because it can be used either as a buff spell or a removal spell. Again, be careful with enchant creatures. I talk about this a lot, but you do open yourself up for that two for one opportunity. Uh, if you're buffing one of your own creatures and they use, you know, a doom blade or whatever kind of removal spell on it. Uh, it does kill that creature and the enchant creature, and that's just an easy two for one on their end. So uh, just be careful of that. If you are going to be playing with cards like this, I tend to avoid them, but I actually like the flexibility here. So that's why I kind of feel like it's worth pointing all of that out. So uh, we'll move to our last uncommon. Harmonize, a great card. Sorcery uh, for two and two green, draw three cards. Again, a very blue kind of centric card. It's kind of a divination for green. Uh, obviously, yes, I know it costs one more, but uh, very good card. Definitely worth playing if you're in green. I don't think it's worth taking super early, to be honest. Uh, again, it's not worth or it's not a reason to be in green. It's just a really good value spell. Uh, so if you are in green or if you find yourself there, Harmonize, very, very good card. Definitely an easy pickup. Don't think so here, though. And then our rare is Kravax Ascended Hero, 4-4 uh, four, four for 4 and 2 white. Other white creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. Non-white creatures get minus 1, minus 1, and pay 2 life and return it to its owner's hand. Ooh, that's a pretty good card. So this obviously forces you into white, and I know I just said that I don't want to be forced into a particular color too early. However, when you have a bomb like this, it's kind of difficult to pass. So I actually do think this is the pick, uh, but it does not buff itself. Important note there. Uh, it does not give itself plus one plus one. It is just other white creatures. So you're going to need a very, you know, overabundance of those white creatures to really get a lot of value off of this. However, that's definitely easy to do, uh, depending on the packs that are coming around, of course. Uh, the downside to this, other white creatures get plus one, plus one. That could be the opponent's creatures, just to keep that in mind. Uh, but that kind of keeps the playing field even if you're going to be playing a lot of white creatures anyway. It's not a huge deal. Uh, Non-white creatures get minus one, minus one. You got to be careful on the creatures that you also put in your deck and be very conscious of what the creatures are on the opponent's side of the field. Uh, if they are not white, it's great. If you've got non-white creatures, that's not so good. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're deck building and when you're taking the rest of your picks throughout the draft. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the pay two life and return it to its owner's hand. Fantastic card because there are a lot of situations where you can uh, kind of cheat combat a little bit with a card like this. Plus, uh, it has kind of built-in protection. If somebody targets it with something, you might be able to bounce it back to your hand uh, and kind of mitigate that that uh, spell or let it fizzle or whatever. Depends on the spell, of course. Uh, I do believe Split Second is in the set. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But uh, all of that to say, uh, I do think that Crovax is the pick here. I do think it's just the strongest card. Uh, it is a little bit expensive, but it's very, very worth it. So that's going to be my pick. Please, again, as always, feel free to let me know in the comment section if you disagree. But if you liked this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.